Like Joe. Remember what you said on the show? Life's a garden. Dig it. Hey, all of you awesome gardeners out there. I want to thank you so much for all of your support here on the Urban Gardener channel. Now, let's get growing. All right, everyone, here we are. Welcome to Let's Get Growing, your uh, gardening live cast here on the Urban Gardener channel. I'm Enoch, and I'm your host this week. We've got a really great show for you today. Our special guest this week is Christy Wilhelmy. She is the author of Garden Variety. It's a really great garden novel. We'll talk all about this just a little bit later in the show. So stay tuned to uh, uh, hear all about that interview coming up here a little bit later on. And um, if you are joining with us here, join with us live, or even if you're joining with us in the replay, you can uh, get down into the comments below. But if you are with us live right now get into the chat box there let me know you're here let me know what you got growing on and all of that sort of stuff you know i love to hear about all the things that you guys have growing on in your gardens and also be sure to give us a big thumbs up hit the like button hit the subscribe button as well too if you haven't already to follow along with all of our garden adventures here on the urban gardener channel it's great to have you all here with us, too, who have been subscribers for a while. Now, uh, also, one of the things you can really help out the show, too, is we are a new show. We are trying to build up our viewership, and uh, it would be great if you could share this show with your friends and all of your garden friends, your garden groups. Let people know all about what we got growing on here on the Let's Get Growing live cast. Uh, we uh, just love to talk about gardening and just have a little bit of fun here on a Saturday morning and discuss all of the different things that we've got going on here. And as we're building our garden community, we would love to have you and your friends to join along with us here too as well. We also have a... Um, down below there's a link to our facebook group if you want to even get uh into our community even more there's a link to the facebook group it's the let's get growing gardening group it's on facebook we've got a lot of great gardeners on there sharing all sorts of great things about their gardens it's just a really great fun little community there and uh, we would love to have you on with us as well too so go and check that out that is in the description below and uh and also for all of you who are also listening to us on the podcast i'm sure we'll find all those links as well too in the description for this podcast and you can also find all of that information and more on our let's get growing dot live website where you can find out all of the information you need to about our up coming shows and again too if you are here with us live right now and you have a question or a comment or anything for us during the show or for our guest later on in the interview just uh, ask it there in the chat box and we might just feature it on the show all right so awesome all of that there taken care of um just Really, at the top of the show, just want to let you know if I'm off or anything like that, too. I just got some news, and I'm just going to share this at the top of the show, get it done with. Um, uh, so just before uh, getting started with the show here, I got news that uh, my grandmother passed, and um, she was uh, a great supporter of us and all the things that we do here on my channel. She loved watching our videos. She loved watching the live streams and just supporting the different things that we were doing here on our channel and um i just uh, really appreciated all of her love and support and all of that too um my grandmother was 93 
and she lived a very long and happy life. And uh, so um, I do uh, just uh, just want to kind of recognize her at the top of the show here and, um, and kind of, uh, you know, just kind of let it out a little bit as well, too. You know, I know that um, uh, Grandma Ruth, you will continue to support me. And uh, I, you know, and uh, again, I look forward to all of uh, your advice and support from beyond. So thanks. Uh, I don't know, thanks or all of that. But, uh, you know, it was just really great to uh, have her follow along with this adventure that we're on here. And we'll continue forward as well, too. So again, thanks, Grandma Ruth. I know you'll continue to uh, watch over what we're doing here. Thank you. All right, so now that uh, we got that out of the way, <laughs> uh, just you know, kind of some really crazy news just to get to uh, to get right and uh, right before you're about to start a fun live discussion about all of this sort of stuff. But uh, she was a really great supporter of what I did on the show, and she really loved what we did. So I really do want to recognize her as well too. Um, so things going on in the garden what's going on in your garden again i'd love to hear about what you guys have growing on uh i've got tons and tons of things going on right now um so uh let me know what you've got growing on in your garden um again if you're here with us live just jump in the comments section there in the chat box let me know a little bit about what you got growing on and also we are going to talk just here in a little bit about our question of the week. We posted the question of the week again on that Facebook group, uh, Let's Get Growing group, and our Urban Gardener page as well, too. Uh, you can find, again, a link to the Facebook group down below where you can participate with our question of the week throughout the week. Or if you're joining with us here live, you can just let us know here as we'll uh, have a conversation about what is your favorite tomato variety Tomatoes are one of our uh, uh, most favorite crops. You hear it all the time from all of our different guests. It's uh, one of those that gardeners just really, really enjoy growing. There's tons and tons of varieties out there, and I know that you have a favorite variety. So if you're here with us live, get in there. Let me know in the uh, chat box what uh, your favorite varieties are, or if you're watching us on the replay or um, if you are listening to us on the podcast, you can come join us in the group and uh, get into the discussion as well too, or get in the video and, uh, and uh, in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite tomato varieties are. I have some favorites of my own. I've got a list of the different uh, tomatoes that we are growing in our garden this year, and we'll talk all about that here coming up in just a little bit here too. And, um, yeah, like I said, I got a lot of things growing on in the garden. Uh, most things are planted. We're still waiting on, um, uh, about this next week, we'll get, uh, some final things done as far as planting and all that goes, but most everything right now is maintenance. We're trying to take care of and keep up with all of the different things going on in the garden. There's pest issues, but the biggest issue that we all face, and this is, you know, uh, when it comes to all gardeners all over the world, one of the biggest things uh, for us to do, especially in an organic garden, is keeping up with those weeds. We've got weeds popping up all over the place, and I've been so busy dealing with different things in the garden, you know, different uh, planting schedules and, and um, you know, changing of uh, containers and, uh, you know, prepping different beds, all sorts of different stuff that we've been doing in the garden. And so some of that weeding kind of takes a back seat a little bit to some of these other things that are just a little bit more uh, pertinent and have to be done. So, uh uh, this uh, last week kind of was a catch up on weeding for me and cleaning up different things in our garden spaces. Um, I I also grow along uh, this strip along our alleyway that we have running alongside of our house. And uh, there's some alleyway space as well too on another alleyway that kind of crosses the center of uh, the block going in the other direction. So it kind of tees up a little bit. But we've got all this really great alleyway space 
to grow in and to and to uh, use that uh, you know you wouldn't normally think of using, but it is an alleyway. It is out there. It's just you know tons of weed seeds are collecting all over the place every single year. So there's just it, they pop up just relentlessly. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of, again, what we've been doing in my fingertips. I'm telling you, some of those weeds are just little tiny little things that are, uh, you know, really, you know, kind of attached into the ground. You'd be amazed how hard a little tiny weed can hold on to the ground with its roots. <laughs> but uh, everything looks nice now, looks really great. We spent the time. And again, it's another one of those great therapeutic things that you get in the garden experience is, uh, you know, pulling weeds is another way of just kind of getting out some of those frustrations and things going on, just like, uh, and, you know, and you just spend that time kind of, you know, thinking about things and it just helps you really process stuff too. So, you know, just like, again, overall great week in all of the great garden spaces, just kind of improving and making things look better and nicer and, and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, it, and, um, really great to uh you know get it done finally as well too you know after having to have it wait for so long all right we got margie says i had i have had five months of maintenance <laughs> all right all right okay let's see here Thanks everybody for joining with us. Absolutely. It's so great to have you all here. We've got the Grateful Garden, LP, Margie, all of you really awesome to uh, join with us here. Thanks for jumping into the chat box. And uh, again, let me know what kind of tomato varieties. I don't know if you saw that or not, but our question for today and this week is what are your favorite tomato varieties? We'll be talking a little bit about that a little bit more here coming up in the show. Um, lots and some of the other things that uh, uh, that we are uh, working on in the garden space as well too is uh, again like we're talking about maintenance and those different things that we've got to get taken care of. Um, I've got garden beds <laughs> and a lot of my garden beds are these elevated raised beds because I have this cement patio that I grow on and, and um, some of them and uh, one of them I didn't even notice had an issue, a really big issue. And it's because we have a lot of plants growing around it, but uh, it seemed to have kind of collapsed from underneath uh, on the opposite side where I couldn't see it. So, you know, those are those sort of things right now I got to start catching up with too as well. Now that most of the planting is done and taken care of, uh, now it's time to start fixing up some of this stuff and, and get some of those, uh, get some of those chores done in the garden and just make sure that everything is growing along really great. Okay. Awesome. And, um, yeah, and then also I have another bed too as well that uh, is just been waiting and waiting and waiting to get done and taken care of. All right. Excellent. So great to see everybody here on the show. And again, too, um, we're just kind of adjusting to a little change from just before the show so not only did i get the news about my grandmother but we had to adjust for a little bit of change here so we're just kind of hanging out a little bit right now i do want to hear about all of your uh, favorite tomato varieties we'll talk here in just a little bit after our um in the garden segment that we'll get to here in just a moment um yeah, so again, too, like I said, just been weeding and doing all sorts of stuff, taking care of things in the garden and, and um, you know, looking forward to uh, a lot of these things that are actually really growing pretty well. I'm pretty surprised. 
because as a if you've listened to the show before i've been talking about you know kind of an adjustment i had to make during the off season about whether or not i was going to get to stay here at the place that i live in that i've been gardening for the last uh, 10 years and and finally you know just over the last couple of months got to know that you know i you know that i was going to get to stay but for months i didn't know whether or not i was going to get to stay or not so i've been really behind on a lot of stuff because i didn't really start things because i didn't really intend on doing a lot of stuff here or even maybe even growing a garden for the most part uh this year because of uh those possible changes that i was possibly going to have to make and um so when i got the news that i was going to get to stay which was just a couple months back uh i was like scrambling <laughs> to get everything going and, and to get things started and to start some seeds and to just kind of get the garden to where uh I, I was hoping to be like maybe even kind of half done i knew that you know uh, that uh, I wasn't gonna be able to get to everything that I would normally do in the garden space, but uh, I'm surprised. I'm telling you, I, I I've been walking around again, as I said, all the different garden spaces, doing all the different weeding and and trying to shape things up a little bit. And other than just one space in the very back alleyway that we're not growing in because of the fence that needs to be fixed back there, we've got everything planted out. Uh, all of our spaces are pretty much taken up and growing and we've got things, you know, growing and looking good. Some plants are just looking even better than what I was expecting. So in the long run, you know, maybe not quite where I would have it in a normal year, but for having the setback. For this year, man, I'm really kind of surprised. We got some really good stuff growing on uh, in our garden spaces uh, back there. So uh, I'm really excited about some of the things that we're going to get to see. And then that as well, too, we do have uh, the garden space that I grow in over at my friend Mike's place. We've got these two big, huge 20 foot by 40 foot garden plots that are right in his uh, front yard. And he has a big corner a uh, yard that's right on the corner of the block and uh, bends around the corner we've got two plots uh on each side of those streets there and um we've got those all planted out too as well and they're looking really nice as well some things that are just growing really really better than what i thought they were going to be growing at so uh, again uh you know, some things can surprise you, you know, you put the work in, in the garden, you know, and it can kind of surprise you some years, <laughs> even when you're not really expecting very much. So, all right, at this point in time, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and check out my little segment here we call In the Garden. And... Welcome everyone, and thanks for joining with me in the garden. And this week, we're talking about something I see that comes up every single year. And mind you, I even fell for it once myself. Now around this time of year, what we're seeing in our gardens are these infestations of aphids. These disgusting little bugs that when they start getting in really large numbers, can really start to suck the life out of the plants that we have in our garden. So reach out and look into different ways that we can find in order to manage these ugly little pests and get them out of our garden and killing off our plants. One of the things that we see quite often and really common way of treating and dealing with aphids in your garden are ladybugs. Now mind you, ladybugs are really beneficial for your garden and great to have around. Plus, kids they just really love them they're pretty much your garden mascot and when you can have them in your gardens they are certainly welcome but one of the things I see quite common and I see different videos and people putting information out in posts in different gardening groups is talking about buying these commercial bulk amounts of ladybugs in order to release into your garden in order to take care of those large aphid infestations 
And I'm here to tell you that that does not really work. I've done it myself. I did this early on when I was a young gardener and I went and bought myself a nice bucket of these uh, ladybugs that I got at a garden center. They had a nice little fridge to keep them nice and cool and docile in order to let them kind of uh, have a chance to hopefully stick around in my garden when I let them out and uh, ultimately that is not what happened because ladybugs are a migratory uh, insect. But I mean, if you want to go out and you want to buy those buckets or those little nets that are full of the ladybugs just so that you can go and release them out into the wild, sort of like you would do when you go to the restaurant and you'd get the lobsters out and go release them into the bay and give them some level of freedom, then absolutely go get some of those commercial ladybugs, let them go because that's exactly what they're going to do is they are going to go. Now, mind you, a handful or so of these will stick around for a little while, especially if they're nice and cold, like I said. They'll kind of hang out, they'll roll around, they'll possibly eat on and feed on some of the aphids that you have in your garden. But ultimately, when they're ready and their energy is up, they're going to open up those wings and they are going to fly off. Because as I mentioned, they are a migratory insect. There are over six thousand different species of ladybugs in all different colors and sizes and uh, dot patterns some without any dots different head patterns some of them are beneficial some of them not so much as in the case of the asian lady beetle that we see quite uh commonly in a lot of different uh, gardening groups and things talking about how they aren't a beneficial insect like the regular ladybug or lady beetle or lady bird but probably best described as lady beetle but these uh, little insects are great to have around in your garden but you just don't want to be buying them so that you can release them into your garden space. They do say though that you can take um, some uh, like uh, sugar water and you spray it on them as well too in order to kind of glue their uh, their wing caps down in order to allow them to uh, stick around in the garden just a little bit longer so you know until they can open that up and get themselves uh, airborne and then they'll be gone at that point too so the idea that uh, we're going to get a bunch of these uh, ladybugs to take care of that aphid work is just really not going to be the case. There are really some other ways that you can take care of aphids in your garden. There's uh, insecticidal soaps. You can also get uh, some sprays that are organic, basically just using like cinnamon and um, mint oils and different things like that that you could spray onto uh, these uh, aphid infestations. But the one way that I take care of them in my garden is I just get the hose out and I wash off these plants and kind of rub them off and kind of clean off the plants and I try to get to these infestations as soon as possible. As soon as I'm starting to see just a few aphids I'm gonna start working on that and washing them off of the plants. Now you'll have to return after a day or two and do this repeatedly for a few days in a row in order to really work those populations down to where they're not really um, where they're not really damaging your plants much anymore and if you do see some of these aphid infestations around you can also look around your garden for some ant hills and some ants climbing up your plants because they do like to farm those aphids for those sugary juices that they excrete after they're sucking the life out of your plants so look for some ants around you might want to take care of the ants in order to help keep the numbers of those aphids down in your garden but for the most part like i said i find that just washing your plants with some water is the best organic way of taking care of aphids so i hope that helps you out in your garden as well i want to thank you so much for joining with me again this week and we'll see you all this next week in the garden
Let's Get Growing is sponsored by IV Organic. IV Organic all-purpose fertilizers offer your plants everything they need to have the most productive, fruitful, and longest lasting lives. For all plants, including your fruit trees, vegetables, ornamentals, and roses and flowers, in-ground or potted plants, young and established, the six macronutrients that all plants need. Macronutrients are those elements that plants need in abundance and include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. Nitrogen helps with the greening of the plants and the growth. Phosphorus for abundance of flowers and fruits plus drought tolerance. Potassium is for disease resistance, root development, and strength. Magnesium is the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, which is responsible for photosynthesis, converting waters and carbon dioxide with light energy into sugar molecules. Sulfur helps green pale plants turn dark green and necessary for optimal plant metabolic processes. And calcium, the building block of all plant cell walls. Ivory Organic all-purpose fertilizers have it all in both the Super and Premium Blend products. The Super Blend simply has a higher percentage of the macronutrients plus azomite, which is derived from volcanic ash deposits to offer your plants many of the micronutrients too. The product can be applied to the soil or as a foliar feed and even as a supplement to your compost tea. Ivory Organic all-purpose fertilizers are organic, effective USA-made products to maximize the productivity, health, and life of all plants and trees. Keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. All right, excellent. And yes, definitely one of the best ways that you can support our show here, Let's Get Growing, is to support our great sponsor, IV Organics. And um, you can go to their website at ivyorganic.com and use our promo code GROW10, G-R-O-W-10, and you can save 10% off on all of their great products that they have there as well, too. So definitely go check them out and uh, see all the great things that they got growing on over there at Ivy Organics. And awesome. Uh, we continuing on with the show. We asked you all a little bit earlier about what was your favorite tomato variety? Because it's uh, uh, one of all of our favorite things in the garden. I hear it over and over again from all of our different gardeners that we talk to here on the show. Uh, tomatoes are some of our favorite things to grow. So what are some of those favorite varieties that you have growing on in your garden this year? Um, or even in previous years, what are some of the ones that are really regular mainstays for you in your garden? Um, we uh, did uh, get, let's see here, Margie tells us that she loves yellow tomatoes. Uh, her best tomato last year, some yellow tomatoes. Oh, I have a really great yellow tomato variety that I'm growing this year myself. It's a, a tomato called a uh, Union Yellow, and uh, I have to, <laughs> I, I have to say I, I named this tomato myself because I just could not find the person who grew the grew the plant. And um, because they basically abandoned a community garden plot um, years ago, but they had this just really delicious, really awesome yellow tomato variety that I got one of the tomatoes from and saved the seeds. And I've been growing it almost every year. I've skipped a year or two here and there, but uh, it's just really awesome. It's just this really big, giant uh, yellow uh, tomato and I just call it Union Yellow because uh, our community garden was the Union Park community garden so um, but uh, I actually did I broke out the seeds this year and uh, and I'm growing some more of those again this year to try them out again too because I really love this yellow tomato variety myself and LP says, uh, I do enjoy the sun gold and pineapple. I'm still learning what a favorite could be. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's always 
some new favorites that always seem to pop up when you're because uh, one of the things i really try to do every single year is i do have some favorites that i grow and i try to grow every year but i also try new varieties i've got you know i, I like to at least grow half of the tomatoes that i grow as uh, as uh, newer varieties just to try new things out there are so many varieties out there so you know every year i'm finding some that i really like even more than i like some other ones so we're finding new favorites favorites almost every single season around here as well too because uh i do i just like trying so many different uh varieties because there are a ton of varieties of tomatoes out there and uh the pineapple uh that you mentioned too there's one i got from territorial seed company uh, a few years ago and i grew that out a couple of seasons and i really really like that tomato as well and we do have some sun gold growing as well too in our gardens this year as well too, which is what uh, dogs my sun gold. Yes, sun gold is probably. I mean, I don't know if I took a poll of all the different uh, listeners and all the different gardeners in our in in our uh, uh, let's get growing community. I bet you sun gold would probably rank right up as one of the top tomato varieties for everybody out there uh i hear about it all the time sun gold sun gold so uh i did grow sun gold in one of my first gardens um several years ago uh and uh, again i did uh start uh growing some again this season from some seed i got from a friend last season for some more sun gold i don't know what happened maybe i didn't collect seed or i didn't uh um, I just somewhere along the line, I, I, I moved past the sun gold, but uh, we brought it back again this year because I had a friend who uh, uh, saved some seeds for me to plant out in our garden this year, too. So we got some sun gold as well. And um, we also got, uh, you know, I like, you know, different varieties, you know, good red uh like a solid beefsteak type tomato are really great it's probably one of my favorite initial favorites when it came to tomatoes probably one of those things i was looking for when i was growing uh, my first tomatoes you know it's like i want to grow you know some of these really great beefsteak tomatoes and uh, i've grown several over the years that i really really like um i i do have this new variety uh called red chief that um i started growing uh this last season and i started growing it because it's a really big delicious red tomato but it also grew very well in this large container that i have and and also it really beat the heat we've got some record summers record heat in the area where i live in this last year and that was probably one of the big setbacks i had to my whole tomato harvest um, this last year was uh, the heat just really really did a number on a lot of my uh, tomato plants that just couldn't handle such extreme heat uh, but uh, that red chief just really really stood out and uh, just and it really was probably in the most direct sun than all of the different tomato varieties that I grow so I was really impressed with that so I've got that one growing again this next year this year as well too um we grew last year one that came back again this year too is one called black from tula and it's a ukrainian really dark nearly black tomato and i really liked that one so uh we we decided to grow that one again this year and then i brought one back that i haven't grown in the last couple of years called uh, dad's sunset and this one's a really, really kind of got a cool variegated color and uh, from a, like an orange to a red and just really, really awesome looking tomato. So I brought that one back again, too, because I kind of missed it. We didn't grow it the last couple of seasons, so I definitely wanted to do that. And I do kind of like those orange tomatoes. This one does kind of just have that orange kind of red kind of uh, uh, distinction. But um, I do have another variety that uh, I did uh, break out again, too, for this year called Orange Kentucky, which was really great. This was an awesome plant uh just grew some really awesome fruits so uh i brought that one back again and uh and it was one of those ones that uh, i didn't grow last season but i 
do remember over a couple of seasons that it was pretty good uh, heat tolerant tomato variety that I had. So um, we'll see how well it does again this year. We'll probably have some pretty uh, scorching uh, temperatures again this year as well too. So, and then we got some mainstays I grow every year, like our San Marzanos. You know, I got to have a good sauce. Uh, you know, kind of paste tomato, and um, we are also growing uh, a couple of different. Um, cherry tomatoes, Rapunzel, and uh, another cherry called Prax cherry tomato. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite tomato varieties of all different tomatoes. And it's a delicious, just large sized uh, cherry tomato and grows on this nice and short and stocky plant and um, they grow really well and uh, they were actually started and named by a gardener uh, who no longer youtubes anymore but a gardener named ray browning from a channel called praxis 55712 and years ago he was giving away seeds for his prax cherry tomato and i was lucky enough to get them and uh, i grow them every single year and uh, I also give away those seeds as well, too. So uh, if you want some seeds, uh, get a hold of me through our Facebook group. There's a link down below in the description. Come check out the Let's Get Growing group. Send me a message or something, and I can find a way to get you some of those uh, tomato seeds if you want to try some, too. They're just really delicious. In fact, I, I have a space in my garden now where I just basically let some of those really good ripe ones stay on the plant. Uh, you know, as much as I want to pick them off, as much as I just want to eat them myself, I just let them stay on the plant until they just fall themselves. I let them just kind of do their thing, rot right on the ground, just do whatever. And then I maintain that space throughout the throughout the winter season. And they just volunteer for me every single year that I do that. So again, I've got a whole space of them. They come up. I don't have to do really any work when it comes down to it. So uh, really great, great tomato variety as well, too. So awesome awesome so yeah tomatoes tomatoes are really awesome i really enjoy growing them just as much as i know all of you enjoy growing tomatoes too like i said when we were starting is that uh i hear i just uh, hear it all the time you know when you ask somebody what is their favorite thing to grow tomatoes are usually right there at the top of the list and again why not i mean there's so many great varieties tomatoes are so delicious and, uh, and really, really fun to grow in your garden. Okay. All right. So now I suppose it's time for our featured guest we've got with us this week. This week's uh, featured guest we have with us on the Let's Get Growing show is Christy Wilhelmy. She's the author of Garden Variety. Um, Christy empowers people to grow their own food, to be more self-reliant, and to reduce pollution and waste one garden at a time. Christy is the founder of garden nerd the ultimate resource for garden nerds where she publishes newsletters her award-winning blog and top-ranked podcasts she also specializes in small space organic vegetable garden design and consulting she holds regular organic garden classes in california and offers tips on her youtube channel worldwide and between 70 and 80% of her family's produce comes from her garden of less than 300 square feet. She is the author of the books Gardening for Geeks, 400 Tips for Organic Gardening Success, and also Garden Variety. So let's welcome Christy to the show. Hey. How are we doing? Welcome, hey. Christy. Thanks for joining with us. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So great to have you here with us on the show. I really have uh, 
when we started the show, I knew that I got to have you on the show because I spent this last winter going through and reading your book, Garden Variety, and it really was probably one of my favorite things that I did this last year was to read this book. In fact, oh. I actually bought a few of these books and sent them out to some friends as gifts because I loved it so much. And that was just such a great, unique way of, uh, of uh, you know, um, sharing a gardening and the gardening experience but in a novel form with characters and everything as well too but uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute All let's right. take a moment or two and let me let you introduce yourself to everybody and talk a little bit more about what you do there at garden nerd sure uh i and you you said it all in my intro i I have a, a small space garden here in Southern California. I'm in Los Angeles and I specialize in small space biointensive gardening. So getting the most out of the garden, you know, in most people here where I live are either apartment dwellers or have small spaces to grow and they don't have a lot of land to work with. So I like to get as much out of the space as, as you can. And I started in, I started on a balcony and then I got a community garden plot and then I got a house. And so I have, I still have my community garden plot and I have my house and, um, but I have a big giant Brazilian pepper tree in my backyard. So the sunlight space is limited to kind of the periphery, the peripheral areas of the garden. So I've got, um, I've got about 300 square feet at home and then a small uh, 15 by 15 foot space at uh, my community garden plot, which is basically the inspiration for garden variety, which we'll talk about later. Um, and I, my front yard is fruit trees. My backyard is raised beds and some more fruit trees. We've got chickens and some bees. And that's kind of what my homestead looks like for your listeners out there. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Um, very similar for me, too. And you mentioned there as well that you uh, got started on a balcony. That's how exactly I got started when it came to growing my own food. I mean, of course, I've been, you know, kind of gardening indoors with houseplants for years. I, I can see that. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, when it came to actually growing food, I started on a balcony and, I, it, you know, I was really surprised. I had a friend give me a cucumber start. I put it out on the balcony. It took over my balcony and I was eating cucumbers and was just blown away. I was like, oh, and the next thing you know, that all of this is now the result of that cucumber on a balcony. So, Yeah, it's somewhat addictive, isn't it? Once you get a taste of it. Yes, it's amazing. I can't believe it. But yeah, it's cool. And and it's great to hear from people who have that sort of similar experience, too. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about what you do and what you share. It's similar to what I do and share as well on my channel is, you know, small space gardening, you know, growing food in small spaces is, uh, you know, it's possible and it's possible in spaces you wouldn't even think of, like an apartment balcony or a walkway or uh, like I have here. I have just like a little kind of 10 by 10 cemented patio. Yeah. You know? And when I moved here, I was like, oh, what am I going to grow on this? A lot. <laughs> so I had, yeah, a lot is what yeah. it turns out to be. But when you're first looking at it and you're not very well experienced, you might look at that and not think very much of it. But, you know, I think that's the great thing, again, too, what you do as well, too, is to be able to help people who might have that sort of space, be able to take that and turn it into something that can be very productive when it comes to growing uh, food for ourselves. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I will also mention, too, that uh, um, one of the things I love to do and I finally got to do, I haven't done in a few years, was to make it up to Seattle in February for the Northwest Flower and Garden Show. Oh, yeah. You were there, too. All right. That was a fun show, wasn't it? It was really great. I was so busy and I was being pulled around doing some things. I was working and doing some things with some friends and stuff that I really only got to catch just a bit of your talk on compost. But I thought everything was just awesome and it was great. It was a great talk there, too. So that's one of the other things that you get to do as well, too, is kind of get to do some speaker opportunities and discuss different uh, garden subjects. Yeah, I do a lot of speaking. Uh, the The next one coming up, the next big one is going to be the Heirloom Expo. Um, for anyone who hasn't been, it's like running away to the gar to the circus for gardeners. You really should go. And this year, it's going to be in Ventura County, which is in my neck of the woods. Yes. Um, so if you haven't been, you should make a plan to go. It's a lot of fun, and it's 
really like-minded uh, people all sharing seeds and ideas about growing is worth the trip. Totally. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Another one of those things that, you know, for me and my channel, we definitely do. Um, started going to my first heirloom exposition back in 2016 or 17 mm -hmm. and we've gone every year except for the years we haven't been able to the last couple but they're finally bringing it back and if, did you know that this is the 10th annual yeah actually so this is their 10th heirloom exposition and i'm really excited about it because it's everything just like you said it's a bunch of like-minded gardening nerds mm -hmm. running around enjoying the uh the idea of uh gardening and growing food and trading seeds and yeah it's just really awesome and i, I look forward to seeing you there uh we did have on our show one of our first few guests that we had on our show was jared gettle the uh, founder of Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company and the Heirloom Exposition. He's such a great person and has been real supportive of all the things that we do here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him too at the Heirloom Expo this year. Yeah, it's a great place to get guests. He's been on my podcast as well. And uh, and from the Heirloom Expo, I seem to run into all kinds of people who are really great to talk to. So yeah, it's worth yeah. All, the, all the lectures, all the conversations. It's Every bit of it is fun. So it's, come see us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come down there and check it out. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to be there. I've been talking lots about it, as you can tell. I really enjoy it. I love just the whole experience and I've done several different videos on it and just, it's just one of our favorite things to do here on our channel. So real quick here, we've kind of got into a little bit about what you do and all that stuff. Let's take a little step back in time just a little bit and let's talk a little bit about what was your first like gardening experience what got you started on this whole gardening adventure in your life well uh a lot about gardening ties into what we eat and so my experience with starting to garden really wholesale was when i became a vegetarian kind of the more i learned about our our uh, food system the more i wanted to con take control over what i ate personally. And so it ended up being that that was when I started growing things in pots on that balcony, you know, and then and then on the patio and then on the community garden. And but, you know, I think back to when I was a kid, my parents planted a little garden in our backyard and they would plant carrots and peas. And I was a really picky eater. I wouldn't eat vegetables cooked, you know, but I would eat them raw. And so picking peas off the vine and pulling carrots out of the mm -hmm. ground and washing them off and eating them straight from the garden. That was the thing that kept me alive, I guess you could say, <laughs> <laughs> nutrient wise. Um, yeah. So it was, yeah, you know, so it was that kind of thing and the memories of doing that with my family. Uh, and, and then it just, I think as any kid does, they grow into being a teenager and, and you either, you either stay with what you're doing or you change completely. And I changed completely. And so coming back to gardening was a full circle for me. Um, as an adult, when I was I was 23 when I went vegetarian and never looked back really. So it's been gardening and and <laughs> and eating you know eating plant based foods for for the last 30 years. Right on, right on. So it's still I mean you were you were just in your early 20s, you know. You're saying the when you first really got started, so you're still pretty yeah. young, you know. So you got into growing and gardening still at a pretty young age. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And again, too, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I share this every now and then, too, is I was the same way as you said, too. I was one of probably the most pickiest eaters when I was a kid. Uh, anything green, any sort of vegetable or anything like that, you know, and again, too, the same thing as, you know, fresh vegetables being in the garden. I do have a lot of memories when I was a kid, but if you cooked it and put it on a plate, I was not touching that thing. And no. boy, oh boy, I, I remember being a kid, you know, you're going to sit there until you eat that. Well, I, I, they, they'd be putting me to bed from that table. That's Yeah, <laughs> I sat in front of a lot of cold plates of food, I'll tell you that. And it was just the point, most pointless exercise. I'll let, I mean, if any parents are listening, just don't do that. It's so not worth it. And, yes. and you know, it just turns kids off food even more. But Gardening I, really turns kids on. I have a lot yes. of clients who want to grow yep. food with their kids. And um, some people, some of my clients actually have kids with 
food allergies so bad that they want to grow stuff for them so that they can eat without the, the worry of cross-contamination from grocery stores and yeah. whatnot. So uh, that's a big, that's a big change for people. And they, they learn to grow some of their own stuff and it makes, I mean, even just salad greens, you know, it's so much better from home and mm -hmm. so many, you can grow so many different varieties, right? I mean, you were talking yeah. with, before we came on, you were talking about all the different tomato varieties yeah. that are available, but lettuces, let's talk lettuces for a second. No, I mean, I grow no, 10 no. to 14 different kinds every season and that's more than you get at the store for sure. So lots of options there and make it more interesting to eat too. Yes, definitely grow your greens, teach your kids how to grow them because that's that's one of the things, you know, when if you got your kids involved in the garden, uh, they are going to, uh, you know, be consuming and enjoying those vegetables, you know, that us picky eaters weren't. I didn't have that. I, you know, I, I look back, I think, you know, if I had that garden experience when I was younger and I was learning to grow those things, I probably wouldn't have been as picky about eating some of that stuff as I was. Yeah. And I think that's very true. So that's one of the big reasons to uh, get your kids out into the gardens teach them and show them how to grow food so that they can enjoy it even more. Here, here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So again, yeah, well then, um, you know, so you, you uh, grow out of a, mostly out of a community garden right now, right? Is that right? Or do you have your own garden spaces? Yeah, I have two gardens. So my community okay. plot is, uh, 15 by 15 feet. My home garden, I have spilled out of a 12 by 17 foot area that has four, uh, four by four raised beds and four two by four raised beds. And then I've got another four by four raised bed and then a six ish, six by four raised bed and some containers and then fruit trees that are spilling out. And the whole front yard, instead of a lawn, we have a mini orchard. So there's fruit yes. trees out front. And we do a lot of citrus here because we're in Southern California and that grows well. Yes. Um, we've got, I've got some stone fruits. Uh, I'm looking out there right now. Nectarine. Uh, I've got an apple tree, Fuji apple. I've got a loquat tree, which uh, is a Mexico native plant that you don't yes. see loquats in grocery stores because they do not travel, period. So you have mm -hmm. to grow it if you want to eat it. So that's one of the other reasons to grow food yeah. is because, you know, you can grow stuff you can't buy at the store. It's awesome. Yeah exactly exactly yeah. yeah the only thing you're gonna find at the store is those things like you said they travel well they store well on a shelf for a long time so that really limits varieties that you get available at your stores mm -hmm. so when you're growing your own gardens you get to you know you get to try those dozens of different varieties of lettuce that are out there those hundreds of varieties of uh, all sorts of different things that you won't find in your grocery store and they taste so much better in the long run too as well yeah and that's awesome i love the idea you know that's one of the things i wish i could do here yeah i'm still not i'm very south enough to be able to grow citrus very well so all of the different cool citrus that you get to grow down there in southern california i'm really jealous about because all of that stuff sounds really good and to have it right there in your yard to just yeah. pick it right off the tree it's true and having lemons year round and you know mm -hmm. oranges in season and tangerines uh really makes a difference i don't i have always lived in southern california so i don't know what it would be like to not have lemons readily available to be honest that said i have some friends up in washington who are growing citrus they, they have it yeah. either in a greenhouse or they're pulling them in for the for the winter I mean, they get kind of sad over winter, but they, you know. <laughs> yes, um, it is possible for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was gift. Well, I mean, it's possible for some varieties of these citrus. You know, some of them, I, when I first started gardening uh, or, or first, my first real attempt at a citrus was probably the worst attempt possible because I tried growing a blood orange tree. And there's literally, that is not going to take my climate at all for any reason. And it definitely, <laughs> I tried, I kept it alive for a couple of years, you know, pulling it in, trying to keep it warm and doing different things. But each year presented an even bigger problem. And eventually it just wasn't able to make it. But uh, again, it, it is possible. 
in, you know, from Washington, even uh, up into Canada, people doing those sort of things when it comes to just, you know, making sure that you're keeping your trees at a certain temperature during those lowest temperatures of the winter time. So, you know, it's not staying below a certain degree. And I know that there's some really good varieties of lemons, too, that take some pretty cold temperatures, too. Yeah, and I haven't done a lot of research into that because I'm, I don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. But there, you know, more and more uh, breeders out there are making climate adaptive varieties because, you know, with climate changing the way that it is, mm. we need more durable varieties for those areas that are that are shifting. Although that said, I always have said for the last decade, I've been saying Mexico's weather is moving north. So your mm -hmm. hardiness zone keeps shifting. Every 10 years or so, we're shifting into a warmer hardiness zone. And so pretty soon, who knows? You'll be able to grow citrus yes, outside. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Telling you, the, the last couple of winters, I, I, I mean, I completely agree with that. I've seen it with my own eyes and my own experience in my garden. I'm, you know, I'm kind of in the center of the West Coast, you know, so kind of what you're talking about there is how, you know, that weather's moving up. I mean, I get to see it. I get to feel it for sure in such big difference from what it was 10 years ago mm -hmm. to where it is today. So definitely I'll be looking forward to growing all sorts of citrus here in the near future, right? Yeah. Keep <laughs> me posted on that. Yeah, exactly. But um, so what are some of those, uh, you know, I'm sure you grow all sorts of different stuff in your garden. What are some of your favorite things to grow in, in your garden spaces? Well, it's summer, so let's talk about the the, the warm season stuff. I because mm. it's kind of like picking a favorite child, but I, you know, everyone's like, oh, I love growing tomatoes. I really don't like. I don't. I don't enjoy growing tomatoes. I love tomatoes, but growing okay. them is really hard here because we get the marine influence and oh, lots wow. of there's every kind of blight you can imagine. We get it. It's just that oh. way. Yeah. Um, we also have coastal temperatures, so I'm growing coastal varieties. Uh, which we can talk about. But the thing I love growing, and this may be weird because it doesn't seem all that sexy, but if you go to the Heirloom Expo, it will become sexy for you, is winter squash. I love growing oh. winter squashes. The thick-skinned um, thick skinned yeah. squashes like butternut and delicata and pumpkins of yeah. all shapes and warty sizes and, mm. um, you know, the bizarre hubbards and kushas and weird just bring them on i love oh, yeah. them i love them they look great on display as you're waiting to cook them throughout the winter which is why they're called winter squash by the mm. way um i think people get confused between summer squash and winter squash it's not when you grow them the name is for when you harvest them and say you know how long they'll last so yeah. summer squashes have a thin skin you have to eat them during the spring and summer winter squashes store through the winter. That's why they're called that, but you grow them in the summer. So right now I've got some Connecticut pumpkins. Um, I love growing my Halloween pumpkin. I've got uh, a, a spaghetti squash and Kogi nut uh, is a squash that's a hybrid, which I don't often grow hybrids, but this one does really well. It was a row seven seed. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Um, Dan Barber, the chef, he started a seed company that, that, uh, is focused on growing things for chefs so that they can use all the parts of the plant. Like they're trying to develop a winter squash that can be edible, really tasty and edible during the, the young stage. And then it matures into something that's really usable too. And this Kogi nut, it's a butternut squash that just, it's like personal sized and beautiful and it it's great. Um, and then I'm also, I'm looking at my notes here, um, growing some, are my other squashes you gotta have you gotta have vines just going all over the place then huh? yeah so yeah so <laughs> what i'm doing to kind of combat that because i like to plant the winter squashes or any squashes any vining anything i like to plant yeah. on the south end of a bed so that it can spill into the pathway yes. so i can still yeah. plant stuff in the regular bed and that yeah. what i've got right now is i've got jarherdale squash and delicata squash interplanted with my corn kind of a two sisters rather than a three sisters garden right. um and they're on the south so that they're gonna spill out into the pathway but they're filling up the space between the corn right now which is kind mm -hmm. of fun um yeah. yeah and and the jarradale pumpkin is a green flesh um not flesh sorry that was wrong 
a green skin. It's uh, yeah. yeah, you don't want to eat green flesh pumpkin. Let me tell you right, right. now. <laughs> um, that would be awful. But the skin is like a powder blue slash green, and they're just really pretty. So I love growing oh, things yeah. like that. So the, yeah, so winter squashes. If you're not into it yet, you will be. Just yeah. open a seed catalog and try something like that. I do like trying a few different squash varieties. Again, it is it is kind of something that's based on space and what I have available because the squash will take up some good amount of space when those vines get going. Or, and, and also depending on the variety and the size of fruit, some of those can get to be some really big plants. I love, uh, I just love a flowing squash plant though that's just nice and healthy and the way the way they look and all of that too is great yeah. but uh, again you mentioned the uh, heirloom exposition again too and, and it's, i think it's probably one of the funnest things about uh, experiencing that exposition is their um is their room where they have all of these different squashes on tables and yeah i've i've done on my channel and you can check out videos of uh table tours where we're just walking and looking at each and every single one of them because in the long run it's the best experience i get with those types of things because i don't really have the space to be able to grow all those sort of different things but it's so amazing the again when it comes to variety you know right. the variety that you can get in your garden uh, versus what you can get what you're used to buying in a store the different varieties of almost anything you might enjoy growing is just amazing when it comes down to it almost yeah. anything and, you look at and the i think so what happens at the end of the festival is they start selling off the big mm -hmm. giant tower there's a there's a yeah. giant tower of squash so there's a, a sight to behold and yep. and at the end they start selling them off and and i've brought some home when I because I drive up there and I you know come back and I I've brought home a turban squash and a couple other different types and you know save the seeds from which haven't been grown in isolation so you never know what you're going to get yes, but every exactly. once in a while they come out and like oh that's a turban squash so it's a second gen <laughs> you know second yes. uh, succession turban squash so I'm like hey great um, and they're pretty and yeah. um, some of the oh I have to say because I was just talking mm -hmm. with someone about pressing edible oils. Uh, growing hullus pumpkin seeds, which like Styrian hullus pumpkin is a really pretty on the outside seed, and the uh, or the the seed is beautiful. It's a silver stripe. It has a it has oh, a yes. white center and a silver edge. Sil silver edge, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and the pumpkin itself is beautiful. The flesh is inedible, but also not important because you're saving the seeds. Um, and then some of the others like Styrian hullus, really pretty, and you can press those seeds for oil which is if you're going to go full nerd that's the direction <laughs> to go <laughs> yes yeah yeah I, I think i've seen those seeds they're really cool i mean there's and again too when it comes to seeds you get those are you get so many different cool varieties and sizes and cool seeds in your squash varieties too yeah. but uh yeah i totally totally love the uh, growing squash and um, that whole uh, selling off of all the different things. I, I, I also drive from Southern Oregon, usually to the Bay Area for for the expositions. Now it'll be to Southern California, but I'm driving back too with the back of my car full of different things. And mainly I try to grab up the different watermelons they that they have. Yeah. Oh, they, they they grow some really cool watermelons, and I love the orange flesh ones. So that's usually where I'm at when they get ready to, because I think they ring like a bell or something, and then you can go run up and grab whatever you want. It gets and it's kind amazing. of crazy. I, I, did, I did a time lapse on one of my videos, one of my heirloom videos. I did a time lapse. I set a camera up there to watch everybody and watch all the tables empty, and it was great. You know, it's just <laughs> you ever want to be a part of a really fun buying experience stand and wait for that bell to go off at the heirloom expo and get some of those display display fruits they're just yep. great it's pretty <laughs> cool it is yeah yeah and then again too one of the things i did and i didn't grow any this year but over the last couple few years i've been trying different varieties of pumpkins to grow like big Oh, giant pumpkins. pumpkins. Okay. I've got one space, right, that kind of goes that I can grow and let a plant spray out. 
um, uh, right around like a corner area of where this alley is. So it's kind of like a cool little eyepiece at the same time. It just kind of takes up this kind of space that really nothing else can. So it just kind of okay. spreads out and I get, and I got, uh, my biggest one so far was 137 pounds. That's but impressive. It was, it was the second fruit on this plant too. The first fruit actually, uh, the, uh, stem broke. Oh, so uh, I had to go with the second fruit. So that first fruit, oh man, could you imagine? It could have been up to 200 pounds. I'm sure of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We, I've never been able to grow them that big here because of, we're pretty close to the beach. So we just don't get the heat that's needed yeah. for growing those big pumpkins, but lots of small ones and they're, you know, they're still good. So they're you can make a boat, you, you can like hollow yours out and make a paddle boat out of it if you want to. I mean, it's still yeah. kind of, you're still small, but you know, you have yeah. the, uh, the big ones, yeah. the, the giant was, thousand pound ones. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Last, last year I did an interview with, um, with a lady up in Washington who is really a world champion grower of giant giants i mean she's i think had one of like the top eight uh squash in the world uh and her she sought her site on uh being the number one this year and uh so it's kind of interesting to follow her follow along with how they set that up they think it's so intricate though i mean when you get into growing like for that sort of level of uh <laughs> competition it's it's a whole different type of gardening it is you know? <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine did a documentary on giant pumpkin growers. It it gets kind of intense. I didn't think, I'm like, how could this be? How, where is this, you know, they're just going to show people growing giant pumpkins. No, it gets very competitive. And yes, uh, and there's some, there's some espionage and <laughs> involved. <laughs> it, it, can be, it can be really intense. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, if I think of it, I'll let, I'll let you know, but I, I have to look it up, but I, it's a, it's worth investigating. It's a giant pumpkin documentary. If you want to look it up, just, right. I don't know. I don't yeah. remember what it's called, but it's worth seeing. Oh man, that would be great to see actually. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and, uh, I got, I got involved with the contest and tried growing and getting into it. But when I was looking at what it was going to take and, and, what they go through in managing their plants and and making sure that they're getting the biggest fruit possible i was just like oh yeah this is a this is a gardening level beyond mine <laughs> yeah it's really involved because they have to they have to put up shade cloth and water you know the a huge amount of water and yeah pruning the and pruning you have to all do of that. yeah that's yeah, it's a lot <laughs> that's really intense and they splay them out and they prune out certain just yeah, lots of different things. Really interesting. It's fun. I, I can imagine for for that. I just a little intense of a gardening experience for me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, you. Get all this great gardening experience and everything, and then you uh, you uh, decide that you're going to write some books and become an author, a garden author. Tell me about what that experience was like when you first decided to write your first book. So I was actually approached to write garden, uh, a gardening for geeks. That was my first gardening book. And it, okay. you know, one of those fortunate things where I started blogging uh, at gardennerd.com mm -hmm. and then people saw it and a publisher contacted me and said, Hey, we like your writing. We're looking for someone to write this book. We've already got the title. Want to do it? And I'm like, sure. So, you know, uh, put together an outline for them on what I thought would be important yeah. for geeks to know about gardening or <laughs> gardeners who consider themselves geeks yeah. and and uh and they they went for it so the the iteration that is available now is actually an updated version that i had republished with a second with a second publisher and um because the my first publisher got bought up by simon and schuster and they they weren't interested in doing a second version of the book but right. um you know the the writing always was there. So I've been blogging since 2005 and, and it was just something that I loved sharing advice with people. It really comes back to the community garden again, cause I was just doing my own thing. And then people started asking me for advice 
and after a while they're like you know you should do this for a living i was like oh well okay let me check that out and then the book you know the book deal came through and uh and and then grow your own mini fruit garden was the second one which i thought was perfect when uh uh cool springs press approached me about writing that book because yeah. Gardening for Geeks is about biointensive small space gardening for vegetables. And then Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden is about growing fruit in small spaces. I was like, this is the yeah. perfect, like, two fisted, uh, yes. you know, compendium exactly. for growing food in small spaces. Let's do it. Um, and then, you know, once Garden, garden Varieties, actually, I was working on that way before I'd started any of the books, uh, the, the okay. nonfiction books, um, because. Yeah. Uh, because I belong to this community garden, right? Yeah, so much goes on there that I just kept yeah. tucking away stories like somebody has to write a book about this someday. Someone <laughs> has to write a book about this. And the more and more it just kind of developed. <clears throat> I think I wrote the first scene in 2001, way a long time ago. And then I had to put oh, wow, it away yeah. while I, I went through some big life changes and then wrote these other two books. And then Garden yeah. Variety, finally, I got it to be able to focus on that and got it to the point where I had it enough of a through line. And for for those who haven't read it yet, I hope you will. Um, yes. It's, it's the idea. I wanted to illustrate the Southern California growing season uh, chronologically because our garden season is so different than everywhere else. Yeah. And most people, most gardening books are not written for us. And so... I was like, I'm gonna, I don't wanna write a gardening book. That's how it all started. I was like, I don't wanna write a gardening book. I'm gonna tell gardening lessons through story. And so I ended up writing it with a lot more gardening lessons in it. But then after mm -hmm. I got hired to do garden variety, I mean, sorry, uh, gardening for geeks, yeah. I went back and like edited out most of the lessons in the book oh. and then had to really develop it into a, a, a compelling story that you wanna read. Um, yeah. And, you know, so it, it, it came out of that. And, um, and I'm really glad I had the chance to write it <clears throat> and I had the chance to uh, dedicate it to an actual person who is emulated in the book and uh, the, the garden master at my community garden who has, yeah. who is, he's still alive, but he's, he's aging and his, uh, his health has been compromised lately. And so I was just oh, really yeah. grateful that I got out before uh, that happened. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the. Uh, well, hopefully, it'd be all right. But yeah, that's. Um, I too have kind of a you know a fun and interesting uh, community garden experience myself too as I was oh. getting started. Because again, too, I I only had a back patio and I didn't have a very you know I didn't really think about the spaces that I had in the way I do today. And so when I was first started gardening, I was like, I ain't got anywhere to garden. What am I going to do? And luckily for me, uh, one of my neighbors was starting up a community garden down the street at uh, one of our local parks. So I kind of jumped on board to help get that all started up and, and going and everything. So not only did I get the, uh, the uh, you know, the whole kind of like being a part of a community garden experience but i also got the whole getting one started and that whole process and all of that sort of stuff but again too there are tons of things that go on you know we're talking about a a, a community you know come you know a community garden where people are coming together you know different walks of life different experiences all sorts of different things to you know just share in this one thing you know growing and gardening and and doing that and uh, you get a lot of different interesting things and i think that's probably why initially i found garden variety so compelling you know yeah. at first i got the book because i was like a garden novel that just really sounds interesting you know, and I was actually um, I was actually trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to name this show. Ah. And <laughs> and um, when uh, uh, I was thinking about uh, a garden variety show was one of the names. It is it actually taken several of the names I thought of were taken. It's hard. There's the a way, lot out I, there. Yeah. <laughs> and as I was doing it, the book kept showing up. And kept showing up and i was like you know what i'm gonna get this because it just keeps showing up i'm gonna have to check it out and so that's what i did this last winter and i read it when i started reading and and getting into that whole like community garden aspect i was like this is so familiar 
yeah. I really get this. I really understand a lot about it. But at the same time, I also read a lot of different other books. And I, you know, lots of gardening books, lots of other different types of books. And uh, one of the things I thought about this is it just fits so many different categories mm -hmm. of a book. You know, yeah. it's got all sorts of different elements to it. The characters are great. The storyline just flows. So, you, you know, it really just automatically becomes a page turner because you're just trying to figure out what's going on next, what's happening next. That I'm sort so of glad stuff. to so, hear you say that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, I think, it was, I mean, it was really awesome. I mean, I, I mean, when I, when I finally, uh, it, you know, because again, too, you know, I'll read a lot of books. I'll try, you know, I'll, I'll put one, I'll set it down for a little while. I'll pick it back up. I'll do this and that. But that wasn't the case of this one. I just read it all within a couple of days and was like, wow, this is something else. I've got to, uh, you know, and I went and bought a couple more copies. I was like, I got to get this to a few of my friends. They got to read this too and check it out. And uh, one of our longtime viewers, uh, I sent her a copy as well, too. And, and, uh, was like and she she sent me back a message right after she read it she's like oh that book is just great you've got to get her on that show you're talking about doing <laughs> nice i was like well, i'm nice. going to <laughs> excellent well i i'm glad we're yet having this chance to to talk about it yes absolutely um and again too i will let you actually kind of maybe talk about the book and tell people as much about it as you want to tell i could I might give away too much of myself. Oh, sure. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I can, will I not can talk give anything away. <laughs> Don't give anything away. <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, tell us a little more about the book yourself. Okay. So it is set, as I mentioned, in a community garden yep. in Los Angeles, California. So you get that whole chronological Southern mm -hmm. California growing season thing. It's an ensemble piece. There's an eclectic cast of characters, people coming from, like you said, all different walks mm -hmm. of life. And it centers around, I'd say the main character is Lizzie, who is, you know, really good at leadership, but totally not good at relationship. And <laughs> she's she's sort of spazzing out throughout this whole thing. There's somebody who comes into the garden who ends up kind of turning her on her head. And she's not sure how to manage that relationship. Mm -hmm. And and it goes through the season with all kinds of stuff happening, you know, so you learn yeah. about how to deal with gophers and how to deal with bugs and pests. And, and there are, you know, tips, uh, gardening tips peppered throughout the story yes. uh, where you get to learn a little bit as you go through. And I, I, you know, I disguised it so it wouldn't feel like, Oh, info dump, you know, where you're learning right. a whole bunch of stuff. So conversations between new gardeners and more experienced gardeners, um, competitions, you know, and there's a lot of infighting as well, because there's always politics when it comes yes. to running an organization. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. that everyone's a volunteer. It's yep. still, <laughs> there's still power <laughs> struggles and dealing with different types of personalities all coming together in the same small space. So uh, that's as much as I'll say about the plot. Um, the garden itself becomes threatened at some point. Yeah, and absolutely. you get to watch, you get to read how they've solved that problem. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got a real cool kind of like villain hero element to it. Yeah. Which was really great, too. That kind of keeps you going along, too. I think that was a really great part of it. And and again, too, similar issues. We didn't have a neighbor necessarily want to try to, you know, go to any levels or, 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 or have any problems with with uh, all sorts of things but you know you see those similar types of issues where you know there's just people who are not cool with things you know <laughs> yeah and i just loved that part of it too i was like oh man this is so relatable i mean if you've been in a community garden again all of those things are so relatable and then you also mentioned too one of the best parts of the whole thing i thought was really cool because here it is it's a novel you're following these characters you're following this plot line this sort of thing that's going on with this community garden but throughout the whole thing, you're peppering in all of these different garden lessons. So it's, you know, it's not just a novel. It's also a garden book, too, where you can learn some things, you know, by going through this story experience versus just kind of reading something out of a garden book. Yeah. A lot of the reviews from non-gardeners have, they've said they've felt inspired to go plant some basil on their balcony or something, you know, they want to try growing yeah. some something to eat now. So I, I'm like mission accomplished. That's what I was going for. 
That's, yes, exactly. You can inspire some gardeners, and you've done it for sure, definitely. And um, also with the uh, with the book, um, it uh, you follow along with this. Uh, so you're following along with the characters and these different things that's going on, and you're doing uh, the different garden lessons. But you also mentioned it's chronological too, so you're getting getting the different seasons as well. So you're talking about all those different seasons, but then again, you're also talking about different seasons in a place where gardening is just a little bit different. Right, and so for most of, like for example, most people are planting their cool season vegetables in the spring after last frost, but we plant our cool season vegetables in the fall before winter comes because it's too hot. Otherwise we get like yeah. two weeks of spring and then it's summer, you know? So we don't, yeah. we don't plant broccoli in, in March or April cause it's just gonna be full of aphids. And unless you like that kind of extra protein in your diet, that's <laughs> not really if appealing. So we grow yeah. ours, all the cool season stuff grows through winter and it's like practically bug free. So, you know, that's how we do it. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, I know I have a, a good friend of mine who's in our gardening group, Let's Get Growing group, Wayne, and he's gardens out of Los Angeles there too. So during the whole winter time, for all of us in the garden group, we just get to watch all of the things that he gets to do because you might have a different gardening season, but you got this really unique situation where you get to basically garden all year round. So, yeah. I mean, without too many limitations on you know, freezes or, or that sort of thing. Yeah, our dead zone is August, September, October. So that's kind of our winter, basically, where mm -hmm. it's too hot to grow anything. Everything's parched and dry. We get no rain. And so we just sort of get everything in by June 30th and hope for yeah. the best the rest of the way. <laughs> that's kind of how yeah. it works here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. when I go on, I can go on vacation, you know, in the like late fall or early, early fall, September. Oh you know? yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You got to pick those moments of opportunities when you can. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, definitely recommend everybody go check out down below. I got a link to garden nerd and you'll be able to find links, be able to get to this book here, garden variety, go check it out. It is a really, really awesome, awesome book. So I hear that you are talking about, uh, or you are working on a sequel. I so am. Is there, is there anything you can tell us about this sequel? I can tell you one thing. Uh, I'm still, I'm still working on it. I'm not yeah. sure when I'm going to finish. If I can get a break, I will work on it diligently and try and finish it up by the, by this fall. But usually there's a two year lead before books come out. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, but the sequel, so uh, there, there are many people whenever I would say, and I can't even tell you how many, like hundreds of people, I would say, hey, I'm writing this book. It's set in a community garden. And the first thing they would say is, who gets murdered? I'm like, nobody gets murdered. <laughs> <laughs> and so so the second one is going to have a murder. Just saying oh, that. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Awesome. We're going to take it up a level, huh? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Is it? Uh, is it? Is it going to be the same community garden, same characters, that sort of thing? Yeah, same cast of characters, some new characters, uh, same awesome. setting, and uh, and just a little bit of a twist on the genre. Awesome, that is great. I can't wait to I can't wait to get my hands on that when it comes out. Um, yeah, because again, I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed all of the characters, all of the different ways you put it together, and all of that, and the resolution and everything of the book is just amazing. So, well put together, really great, great book. And again, like I said, look forward to the next one. Is there any other sort of projects or any sort of things that you're hard at work on right now, or anything you got coming up here? Yeah, I am working on my next online course. I have one online course right now that is available through, you can go to gardennerd.com and, and look under courses for that uh, or classes it's on the classes page. Uh, and that's on pest control. And so my next thing is gonna be about, you know, I have this class I've been teaching for years, uh, showing people how to do that, getting a lot of stuff in a small space thing planning yeah. out your garden on, on paper or on your computer step-by-step step, that is a process that you can repeat with your spring, 
your summer, your fall yeah. garden, whatever, whatever it is. So I'll be covering cool season and warm season crops separately, but all within the same course. So that's, I'm working on that. I'm hoping to get that done this summer as well for a fall launch, or if, if all goes according to plan fall, if not spring. Excellent. Awesome. And uh, uh, I think you mentioned and mentioned to me that you're going to be taking a trip, something maybe a little not garden related, but uh, tell us about this trip you're going to be taking. I thought, I thought this was really cool and interesting. I didn't, something about you, I didn't know. Yeah. So, well, your husband, I, anyways. Is my husband. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm going to be getting on a plane on Wednesday to go to Italy for two weeks with wow. my husband's choir uh, for those of you who maybe watch America's Got Talent, you might have yeah. seen his choir, uh, their Angel City Chorale, and they were on season 13 of America's Got Talent. They got the golden buzzer and oh, they yes. made it to the semifinals uh, of that season. And so we are traveling. I'm traveling as a choir spouse uh, with like three busloads of people, of choir singers, um, about 120 people total, which not the best way to see Italy, but we're going, uh, we're going, it's going to be fun. And, uh, we're traveling, they're doing three or four concerts. We're going to Venice, uh, Florence, Rome and the Na and Naples area. Uh, and we're going to be doing, wow. doing Italy and singing all the way. So it's going to be fun. Wow. wow. That sounds amazing. Amazing. Oh, I'd love to be able to, uh, just travel around Italy or even most of Europe I've been fascinated with for so many years. So someday I'm going to go get that grand train ticket and I'm going to go it. all <laughs> over the place. Someday I'm going to get to do that. I dream about it for sure. You but know, a friend, a friend of mine always says, you never know where the money came from, but you always remember the trip. So yes, just make it happen. Yeah. Oh man, it's just, I love travel, love being able to see things, but to go to see, you know, like Italy is just so, so much history, so much, you know, so much there to check out. My, I think one of my favorite things to do would probably be like a drive along the Amalfi coastline. That okay. Would just be kinda, that would be let's, just kind of really Let's talk cool. about that. <laughs> so I've done that on a bus yeah. and oh, it's yeah. very windy and narrow. And I'll, and yeah. so we, my husband and I, we have this joke. We just go, Feeny, 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 because that's the sound of the little horns that they, the buses oh, are oh. honking every <laughs> single curve. They honk the horn yeah. to let someone coming around the other way know. And you honestly pass within an inch of the buses coming the other direction. Oh my gosh. And the mopeds just skirt between you all. It's chaos. I have to close oh, my eyes. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be fine. These guys do it all the time. It's probably fine. <laughs> yes. But it's like, if you, you may, you oh. may need to take some like sedating, calming <laughs> tea before you go or whatever, but it's, it's worth doing. It's just kind yeah. of a crazy ride. So enjoy it. Oh man. I, yeah. I would be, I'd be like this the whole time. I, oh, yeah. Just look out, oh my look out at the ocean and the other direction. <laughs> Yeah, again, because that's the thing. You want to be enjoying the view and the scenery, but yeah. if things are all kind of like doing this around you, oh my. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely. It would be so much fun. So yeah, I hope you have a really great trip there. Thank and, you. Yeah, that should be really awesome. And, uh, you know, and especially to go around and do something so fun and do all these shows with your husband and all of that. What a great experience. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, excellent, Christy. I want to thank you so much for taking your time to join with us here on Let's Get Growing and talking all about all of this sort of stuff. Gardening, your gardening book, Garden Variety. Again, I want everybody to uh, go down below in the description below. Go find yourself a copy of this book. Go check out GardenNerd.com. Check out everything that Christy has available there, Garden Nerd. And uh, again, uh, really awesome to have you here with us. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Excellent. We'll catch you later. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Hey, gardeners. Thanks for tuning in to our show today. We'll be right back at it here in just a moment. I just wanted to take a second here to highlight our regular videos and features here on the Urban Gardener channel. Our weekly garden journals.
and our incredible feature visits. All right, all right, excellent, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining along with us here. What an awesome conversation with our guest, Christy Wilhelmy, the author of Garden Variety, Garden Novel. Again, really, really awesome book, awesome story. I can't recommend it enough. Go down and check that book out. Get yourself a copy. Uh, get your friends some copies of that book. Enjoy it and look forward to the sequel. I know I really am too as well. And um, definitely thank you so much to Christy for uh, joining with us on our show. It was really awesome to have, with, have her with us here. And um, next week, looks like we're going to have with us uh, Nate Murray of Garden Like a Viking on YouTube. So we'll have Nate with us joining the conversation, talking all about the different gardening and gardening things that he's got going on there. Really looking forward to talking to him too as well. And again, as I mentioned to everybody just a little bit earlier, get down in the description below come and join our urban gardener community at the let's get growing gardening group on facebook come and join with us there share all of your gardens share some pictures answer some questions ask some questions just uh come join with us and join the gardening group at let's get growing we'd love to have you join with us there and remember that's a great way to support our uh, show here, the Let's Get Growing Gardening live cast, is to support our sponsor, Ivy Organics, and you can find them at ivyorganics.com. Use promo code GROW10, G-R-O-W-10, get 10% off of their products that they have there. And also, go check out our website at letsgetgrowing.live find out about all of our future guests and check out some of our past episodes and different things going on with the show and be sure to give this show a big thumbs up hit that like button and also subscribe to our urban gardener channel if you haven't yet already uh, hit that bell notification in fact you know be notified of all the upcoming fun garden adventures that uh, we have coming up here on the urban gardener channel and uh, it's really awesome to have all of you with us here this week on let's get growing thanks again to christy wilhelmy for joining with us and um, from all of us here on the urban gardener channel and the let's get growing show We'll see you all next Saturday.